Hi, Jake from Real Robots here. Today we're going to continue with our Arduino game controller library. And today we're going to start on our external configuration tool, which will talk to our controller through serial and allow us to do as much configuration as possible without ever opening up the Arduino IDE and uploading new firmware. So I'm going to write this new software in processing. You can find the download link for the processing IDE at the bottom of this video. I like to use it for small tools like this and for teaching classes, just because it's really easy to use. It doesn't have much you've got to learn beforehand. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just save my new document here. Let's call it controller uh, remapper. Now we have to import the processing serial library. I'm going to create my serial object. And I'm going to create a string array just to label the data coming in. So I'm going to put in a plus, which will be the first one that comes through, just a separator. Next byte will be the pin, then the input value, then the input type. And it's a good idea to do things like this because when the bytes do come in, it's just going to be a series of numbers and it's going to be quite hard for us to interpret. Oops, now they should be surrounded by curly braces. And I'll put an integer here, packet label count, just to count as we go through each byte. So we'll make our setup block. And then I'm going to run this print array function and print serial list. And what that will do is just print to the bottom down here, the console, all our COM ports that we can see. So that one there, COM24, that's our controller. So now that I know that, I can create my serial object, the serial this, serial list, and make sure you put that integer zero. If you had a few COM ports, you could put in the correct one. If it was a one or a two, mine's zero, and the board rate, 115200. Now we're going to use the draw loop, which is a little bit different to the Arduino loop. This one just runs 60 times per second. It's set because this will also do graphics. And if our serial is not equal null, we will process serial. And I'll just stick that in its own little function down here. And I'm going to say while serial.available, and that means we've got some characters coming through in the serial buffer is greater than zero. I'm going to make an integer called in byte, and I'm going to do serial.read, which just grabs the next byte from the buffer. So we'll grab one at a time. And let's just print line that for now, so we can see what's coming through. And the last thing I'll do here is make a function here, which will be called whenever I press a key. And if the key is, let's say the G key, and what I'm going to do is send something through the serial to the controller. So print line, I'm just going to put this here, print line requesting config. So that won't send the serial, that will just show it in the console here. But this one, serial.write, and I'm going to send this single string config. And that will be the signal for the controller to send us its current configuration data back through serial. And I'm not sure if I mentioned last time I did this, to run this code, you just run up and press play, and that will run straight away. Remember, this one doesn't run on the controller. This actually runs on your computer. And you'll need to press the stop button again to close it and free up the serial port again. Otherwise, it'll maintain that connection and we won't be able to upload more code. Going back to Arduino now, we're going to start writing the code to handle this serial connection. So I'm going to write a function called handle serial. I'm going to write a string called packet, which will keep the packet as it comes in. And similar to in processing, while serial is available, which means there's something in the buffer, then that will just give us a true or a false. And I'm going to make... Yeah, I'm going to make a character here called incoming byte to take the characters as they come in. So similar to before, we're taking one character at a time. But every time one comes in, I'm just going to append it to the end of my packet. Then once it's finished grabbing that, we'll say if the packet length is greater than zero, which means we've received some bytes, 
we're just going to check if the packet equals that string config, then we'll do something. Let's just for now send a message back. Uh, let's return, returning the config. And in any other case, we'll just send back an error message. Just saying, don't know what you're talking about. Error. Do not understand. Let's check my COM port. And let's upload that new code. Now going back to processing, if we run that now, and I press G, you can see we've gotten a whole lot of bytes in return. And like I said, that doesn't really make much sense to us, unless you really know your ASCII tables. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast that byte to a character, and then run it again. Press G, and you can see, returning config exactly what we wanted. So it's accepted our config message and is setting data back. Now, if we send something different, let's see if our error message works. Press G, error, do not understand, perfect. That was relatively painless. Okay, so let's go back to Arduino, get rid of this returning config placeholder, and we're gonna ask the controller to report config. Let's go over to our controller.h class and create a void report config. And it's going to check through every input. So I'll just steal that loop from up there. And so this will iterate through every input. And for each one, it'll go serial.write, which will just send through whatever we write in here. So we're going to send the, each input's pin, its input value, and its input type. Okay, so let's upload that changed code and then head back to processing and test it out. So run that, press G, and you see I'm getting these really funky looking characters. Now that's because we're getting integers through and we're converting them to characters and they're not characters that are in the ASCII table or not that make sense to us in the ASCII table. So we're gonna change that back to just numbers. Press G and you can see 10, 1, 0, 2, 0, 15, 2, 1. Still quite difficult to understand, but you can see is that 10 and then F is ASCII character 102 and then the zero is our input type keyboard button. So what I'm gonna do is go over to my print line over here and have it write the character as well. So we can see the integer and the character alongside each other. Press G, and you can see 102 is F, but pretty much everything else doesn't really make sense to us. And you can see it's even inserting a new line after the 10, and that's because 10 is the ASCII line feed character. So what we're going to do is insert our packet labels, which we made earlier, into here. So I'll just put the packet label counter in there, insert the packet label index packet label count right here. And we'll put a tab and then show our byte. And just the integer byte, we won't mess around with the characters because they come through too weird. And if our packet label count reaches three, then we'll just reset it back to zero. All right, let's run that and see what we get. Press G, and there we go. We've got some labels there now. Let me get rid of that plus because I didn't end up using that. Let's try again. Press G, and there we go. The pin is 10, the input value 102, input type. So it's a lot easier for us to read this now. So that should do us for now. That's the first part of our interface is receiving the current values. I think in the next episode, we'll take those values and fill up a bit of a graphical interface. And if we have time, we'll try changing those values and sending back new mappings and configuration to the controller. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.